State Assembly Member Travis Allen. Hello, hello. Assemblyman. My pleasure. Thank you for making time. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Thanks for making time and making the trek to talk with us today about housing. Um, as you know, California is in an extreme and unprecedented housing crisis fueled by its shortage. And I wanted you to just start out by talking about um, what you see at the, as the root cause of the problem and how you specifically would address it in your first year. So uh, the problem in California with housing, uh, first of all, quick show of hands, uh, who here owns their own home, whether it's a home or an apartment? Yeah, that's a, that's a good 60-70% uh, of the room. Who here rents? Raise your hand. Great. Raise your hand if you have a roof over your head. Right? This is the key. This is the problem in California. California's building supply has not kept up with our population for decades now. Uh, California has not built more than 100,000 new housing units in any of the last 10 years. And estimates say that we need to build at least 180,000 units just to keep up with our current population. What, what's happened now is because there's not enough supply, I'm, I'm an economist by trade, I've been a certified financial planner since 96 and owned my own investment company since 2001. So ultimately, you know, it all goes down to supply and demand. And the concept is very simple. California has 12% of the nation's population. We have over 20% of the nation's homelessness. And the reason is because home prices have escalated dramatically in California much more than they have around the country. The national median for home prices is about $345,000. In California, it's over $561,000. This means that it's 50% more expensive to buy the median home in California than any place else in the country. To give you an idea of what that means, they estimate you would need to make about $115,000 to reasonably afford the mortgage on the median home price in California. So you can imagine with the nation's highest poverty rate in California, with one in five Californians living below the poverty line, housing and affordable housing is simply out of reach of Californians. The question then is, how do we fix this? And as your next governor of the state of California, what specific policies are we going to put in place to fix this problem? And I will tell you there are a number of individual things that we'll get through, but they all fall under the same umbrella of building more homes. We need to build more units across the state of California. We need to cut regulations. We need to cut the excessive fees, and we need to uh, allow zoning in all locations to start building more units. And once we do this, once we make California open for business again, money comes into California. It comes in from our local builders. It comes, from, it comes in from out of state. It even comes in from foreign countries that will actually allow us to build again in California at all different price points. Because you see developers want to sell their products. These companies are in business for a reason. They want to make money. So they will sell our products, their products, which in this case is housing stock, to the high end of the market, to the middle end of the market, and yes, even to the low end of the market. But what we need to do is we need to have uh, regulatory reform. We need to dramatically cut the cost and regulatory red tape that's involved in building homes in California. So we can not only build 180,000 units just to keep up with our population, but build something on the order of 250,000 units or even more every single year. In my first four years as the next governor of the state of California, we will build over a million units in the first four years, if not many more. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow millennials to move out of their parents' home. It will allow people who currently are renting to purchase homes. And yes, it will allow our homeless population to begin to transition into permanent housing so they can begin to rebuild their lives. But that's what we need in California. And that's exactly what I'm going to do as your next governor. Policymakers have been talking about that for years and tried to do make progress in this area for years. How how do you think what you could what you're laying out could work? What evidence do you have? So this is this is really important because you know this is a, a room full of, of policy experts. Raise your hand if you've been in the housing industry in any facet over the last decade. Raise your hand. Well, there we go. We got most of the people in the room. Two decades, three decades, four decades. Okay, well, let's, let's talk about what's happened in the last four decades. When we say policymakers in California, let's be very clear. What we're talking about is Democrats. For 39 of the last 40 years, the California Democrats have controlled both houses of the California State Legislature. Let me tell you how significant this is. This means that every single year, except for one in 1994, 
Democrats control both the Senate and the Assembly in California. So if there's things that we don't like about what's happening in terms of policy in California, for instance, the absolute lack of housing supply, the skyrocketing houses, uh, a cost of homes, and the skyrocketing homelessness and the skyrocketing poverty, it is because of policies that have been put in place by 39 of the last 40 years of the California Democrat legislature. Now, have we had Republican governors in that time? Yes, we have, but not very, not, not, not much when you consider that Jerry Brown and his father have controlled California for 24 of the last 50 years. So these very simple pro-business ideas, common sense ideas that we need, have not been able to be enacted through the legislature. What we need to do, and what I will do as your next governor, I have no illusion that when I'm elected in November that I'm gonna have a Republican legislature. I'm going to have to work with the Democrat legislature in both houses. It probably won't be a super majority, but it will likely be a majority. What this means is that many of the common sense solutions we're gonna to have to put in place are going to have to go directly to the people of California. They're gonna to have to go as ballot measures and they will actually have to be passed on the ballot because we'll never get it through the legislature. And the ideas are very simple. The ideas go to first, CEQA reform. The California Environmental Quality Act was passed with great intentions. As a matter of fact, it was signed by Ronald Reagan. The problem is, is it has been used as a weapon by organized labor to stop building in California. Any project that organized labor doesn't like, before you know it, they have teamed up with the extreme environmentalists and we have lawsuits. This is why we can't build dams and you can't expand freeways and why housing and large scale housing projects have not been able to get the green lights that they need in California to get built. So the very first thing is we take on CEQA head on. We lower the fees for uh, the CEQA process. We get rid of these frivolous lawsuits and the way you do that is very simple. In under a CEQA lawsuit, if somebody wants to stop the development of new housing stock in California, they will sue under CEQA and they'll, they'll find 20 different things to sue under. If they win on just one of those counts, all 20 of those lawsuits will be paid for um, by the defendant. Think about this. This is an entirely unfair system. What we need to do is lose or pays. So what this means is anybody's welcome to sue for whatever you want to in California, but under a CEQA lawsuit, if the loser has to pay, if 19 of these lawsuits fail and one of them, one of these charges goes through, then the plaintiff would have to pay for the cost, the legal cost of 19 of these. What this would do is this would enable developers to say, look, we're gonna do the right thing. And if lawsuits come, great, we're gonna fight them, but we won't be put at a disadvantage. So number one, we cut, we cut the permitting fees. Number two, we streamline the CEQA process. We implement loser pays with CEQA to get rid of all of these frivolous lawsuits which hold up so much of the development in California. And then we take a look at all of the zoning regulations because zoning in California has been strangling our new housing stock and it doesn't have to. California has more than enough land to do whatever we want to. Think about this, California has the best technology and the best workforce in the entire world. We can build communities across California. They don't simply have to expand on current communities. We don't simply have to do urban infill and stacking and packing. We have plenty of land in California. We can build homes in the desert. We can bring water there, we can bring energy there, we can bring infrastructure there. But what we need is we need the ability to actually get these projects zoned. So as opposed to empty promises, which is what we've heard from Democrat policymakers for almost the last 40 years now, what we actually need is direct reforms brought to the people of California in special elections so they're on their ballot. Seek reform, cutting all of the, the costly regulations and directly making loser pay for CEQA. The last thing is this. When we take a look at uh, housing in California, we take a look at the supply in the market and the demand to build. California's home builders have been frustrated now for decades. What we need to be able to do is we need to create an environment where home building is prioritized in the California market by cutting our taxes, by cutting our regulations. And so you might have heard of my five point plan for California. The plan number one is to cut tax in California. And I'll, I'll end with this. As an ex-governor state of California, there's many powers the governor has. He has veto power. He has line item veto power. But he also has the power of appointment. So one of the things that holds up uh, a home building so much in California are all of these unelected bureaucracies and state agencies. As an ex-governor of the state of California, I will have the ability to restaff these agencies with people that are pro-housing, that believe in building homes, not holding them back with red tape and bureaucratic processes. The next thing is line item veto. For any of these state agencies That's that begin to, oh, could. no problem. For any of these state agencies that have been holding us up uh, in terms of building new housing stock in California, 
it's amazing what cutting their budgets can do to galvanize them to actually get to work, and that's, that's what we need to do. Some of the things you've mentioned uh, up here seem to be very heavy-handed approaches from the state. Um, how would you balance the, the, the need to um, build in, um, in parts that haven't been built with uh, the, the local control of cities and counties to be able to? Absolutely. So this is zoning. So what we need to do is we, we need to open up zoning in California so we can build across the state of California. And we need, and, and you just mentioned the word heavy handed. I, I don't really see this as heavy handed at all. What I see this is a firm hand of the government getting out of the way of the private sector so we can actually build again in California. Uh, you also talked about cutting taxes, cutting taxes and um, uh, with regard to housing. Is that what you're talking about with regard to housing? Absolutely. I mean, look, when we start cutting corporate tax in California, when you cut personal income tax in California, when you even cut sales tax and, and gas taxes in California, all of these have a beneficial effect for businesses. All of these tell the home builders, look, build in California, not in Texas. California is open for business again. Some, some of this could have the result of actually taking away funds that California currently has for um, addressing the housing problem, um, which there is an argument to be made that that would actually run counter to the state's goal of, of boosting supply. What do you say to that? So uh, the Democrat policymakers in Sacramento want to tell you that the housing industry must be subsidized all over the place. We have to bring in extra money so we can pay for low-cost housing. Just last year, they passed a bill that put a $75 transaction fee on almost any real estate transaction. And then this money supposedly is going to go fund uh, subsidized housing. I will tell you very simply, as an economist, the way that you get more of something is not by subsidizing it. It's by getting the government out of the way, by cutting the taxes that apply to that industry and easing those regulations so they can actually build again. The answer is not taxing Californians more so they can subsidize something. The answer is taxing Californians less and cutting the red tape, the bureaucracy, and all of these excessive regulations so the home builders are incentivized to actually build in California again. This creates more housing stock at all levels of the market and absolutely gets millennials out of their parents' basements and their garages, and it absolutely gets our highest in the nation uh, homeless population into homes and units and dwellings that they can actually afford. Not by mandating low-cost housing, but by opening up the market so developers are naturally incentivized through the market to build these homes because there is a real demand for them. Yet California is seeing um, many low-income and middle-class families flee the state for cheaper, cheaper living elsewhere, and homelessness is increasing. Um, there, I think many in this room would say that um, just doing, just doing trickle-down, building from the top is going to fill the housing at all levels is, is, is not the way that it, it could actually solve the problem. Look, this is not trickle-down. It's, it's actually a, it's kind of a silly concept. When I, when I talk about these things, I know what I'm talking about. You know, I, I grew up in California. I was born and raised in Southern California, right in San Diego. I grew up five minutes from the border. But my personal story is a little interesting because, see, my parents have left the state. They would have built their home on the coast, you know, someplace nice like Carmel, but it was too expensive. So they built on the Southern Oregon coast. My brother works for Raytheon. Those jobs it's used to be in El Segundo, California, of course. But now they're in Tucson, Arizona. My best friend now lives in, in Texas, where he doubled the size of his house and doubled the size of his business. So this is the problem. It is all of these high costs in California that are taking people out of California. California, on balance, has lost 243,000 Californians over the last seven years to other states taking $8 billion with them. So the answer is that things are too expensive in California, starting with housing stock. The answer is not raising taxes on ordinary Californians to pay for subsidized housing. The answer is instead to cut taxes and cut regulations, which naturally incentivizes more money to come into California, more businesses to spend here, more developers to build here in California. And think about this for a moment. If it became cheaper and easier to build homes in California and units at all price points, money naturally flows into our state. And as money flows into our state, this boosts our entire economy. It means higher wages, it means more jobs. That's exactly what we need for our homeless population so they can pay for the housing units that, that will be built. Where do you stand on the uh, $4 billion housing bond before voters this November? Absolutely against it. Look, Californians does not, do not need to saddle, I'm sorry, the, the California Democrats do not need to saddle Californians with even more debt. This is the entirely wrong approach. And this is why for the last 40 years, the California Democrats have gotten it wrong and we're in this position that we're in. The answer is not more government, more spending, and more debt, and more regulations. The answer is the exact opposite. Look, guys, it hasn't worked for the last 40 years. 
We need a solution that actually will work. We need to get back to basic economics, which is building more homes and incentivizing more homes to get built. The way we do that is we cut fees, we cut regulations, and we tell the home builders that California is open for business. Come and build here in California. And this is not an empty promise. We do this with exact and specific policy prescriptions, lowering taxes, cutting fees, restaffing the state agencies that are making it so difficult to build things in California, changing our zoning laws so we can build more and, and build across the state of California. This is, are the real economic prescriptions that will enable the housing uh, market in California to do extremely well, not only for the people that, that own currently, but for the people that want to get in the market. Think about this. We need 180,000 units in California just to keep pace with our population. We're, we're building less than 100,000 a year. We need, we need 250,000 plus every year to actually bring the price of homes down in California to where they're affordable, which is why I pledged to build over a million homes in the first four years as your next governor. Respectfully, sorry, we're running out of time and I wanna to get to two more things. Uh, renters, uh, renters are feeling the pinch. Even if your plan does work, um, it could take years, it likely will take years. For any of those units to pencil out, what do you say to renters who are struggling paying more than half of their income today? Look, this doesn't take years. Uh, President Trump just did the largest tax cut that we've seen in decades. And guess what? What followed? The largest economic boom that we've seen in decades, but creating $8 trillion, eight, eight trillion dollars of wealth. So, so let me answer the question. Now, now, think about this. Democrats in Congress tried to say that this is going to cost the U.S. government so much money. Well, guess what? What's happening is we're now seeing record tax revenue. See, because when you cut taxes, you actually get more because you get more economic production. So there is a direct and immediate effect on the market. Once we cut taxes, once we cut regulations and allow people to start building and get tough on these CEQA frivolous lawsuits, there's gonna be more supply. And that means that today, renters will see lower prices on rents. But Last example here. In the city of Los Angeles, you see cranes everywhere and they're building across LA. The problem is they're not building the units at the right price points, and so rents are, are either flat or even going up. The answer is that they're not building enough. We need to build even more. We've got plenty of space in California. You build more, it's basic supply and demand. Ultimately, the price will stabilize, and they will be affordable because they'll even go down because builders will continue building as long as there's buyers, and there's 39 million people in California that want a roof over their heads. Two more quick things. Where do you stand on repealing Costa Hawkins, strengthening potentially rent control across the state, and where do you stand on permanent supportive housing as a way to address homelessness? A rent control is an absolute disaster. Every place has been tried. Rent control should be nowhere in the entire state of California. As your next governor, any, any effort I see to expand rent control, I will veto, and I will directly repeal rent control at any opportunity we get in California. And here's why. If you're a property owner, what is your incentive to maintain your apartment building or, or your rental stock if you, if, you can't, if you can't receive any increase in rents? This is why every area that has rent control, you see crime, you see slumlords, you see all sorts of terrible things because there's no market incentive to actually bring this housing supply to the market level to make it good. So, so think about this. What we actually need, guys, is a lesson in basic economics. We need more supply. You don't need a government control. That's the exact, opposite, uh, the exact opposite of what actually works. And then the last question was permanent housing for our homeless population. Tied with services. Type. Tied with support services. Uh, can, can you reframe the question? So permanent supportive housing is an approach uh, that we're, the idea is that you put people into, homeless people into housing first, and then that gives them a chance to address their underlying problems, substance abuse, for example, mental yes. illness. Okay. Give well, them a caseworker and mental health. Well, homelessness has skyrocketed across California. We have the nation's highest homelessness rate and the nation's highest homelessness population, homeless population. It went up 13.7% statewide last year, which is across the nation, it's flat or actually going down. In California, it's going up. It's going the wrong way. What we're doing is not working. In Los Angeles, the city of Antonio Villaraigosa, last year was up over 23%. Who here's gone to downtown LA? There's a six block radius that looks like a third world war zone down there. On the streets of, of Gavin Newsom, San Francisco, there's 22,000 intravenous drug users shooting up on the streets with maps of human waste so you know where to walk. This is abominable. What we need to fix the homelessness problem in California is very simple. It's what we had before, but we need to do it a heck of a lot better. We need state-run mental institutions where people can actually go, indigent can go, and get the help that they need. They can get the supportive services they need. They can get the substance abuse. They can get the psychiatric counseling they need so they can get back up on their feet. We don't need to do it like it was done decades ago. 
What we need to do is we need accountability. We need to get the people the help that they need, but we got to get them off of the streets. And yes, what this will directly lead to is getting these people into a place where they can get the care and services they need so they can get back on their feet, so they can re-enter the workforce, so that they can get the housing. I love transitional housing. But, but the bottom line is transitional housing without the appropriate, appropriate state services implemented at the state level will never work. We've seen it for decades, and all it's resulted in is a skyrocketing, skyrocketing homelessness population. California citizens have a right to clean streets. This is not right for Californians to have this blight across our cities, our major cities in California. And I will tell you too, it is not humane to our homelessness population to allow them to sleep out in public. What these people need is they need our help, they need our services, and they need our care at the state level. And then yes, absolutely we transition them as much as humanly possible back into the workforce and back into our productive economy. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Travis Allen. Thank you very much for your, for your listening today. Thank you for your support. We need real world solutions and that's exactly what I'm gonna to bring to California. Thank you very much. Thanks for the time. Appreciate it.